It's dawn. You sit out in your favorite chair on your wraparound porch, and you breathe in the crisp morning air. You see the steam from your coffee start to swirl in the slight breeze, Le letting your mu letting your mu Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we're talking about the family Cicadidae, better known as the cicadas. Some people call them locusts, but that's wrong. Please stop. The name Cicadidae comes from their common name, Cicada which comes from the Latin word cicada, meaning a cicada. In all seriousness, we have been calling them cicadas for quite some time now, and we're not fully sure of the etymology, but it's believed to have started as an onomatopoeia, mimicking their distinct calls. The only reason some people call them locusts is because some colonizers in America got confused. But to prevent you from being confused, let's make sure we know what a cicada really is. Cicadidae are a family within the order Hemiptera, the true bugs. So if you're looking for a broader video covering all of Hemiptera, click that link above. Overall, cicadas are a pretty diverse group, with over 3,000 described species and a worldwide distribution on all continents except Antarctica. And cicadas are pretty large by bug standards, with some species reaching 2 to 3 inches in length, and even the tiny ones are still pretty noticeable. They have stout bodies and two pairs of membranous wings with the hind wings significantly smaller than the forewings. If you get real up close and personal toward the base of the abdomen, you can even see their timbals. These are ribbed membranes that the cicada vibrates rapidly to create their classic summertime melodies. If you look at the face, you'll notice that their compound eyes are set pretty far apart, sort of like a hammerhead shark. Between these eyes, you'll find a set of three ocelli, or simple eyes, arranged in a triangle. You'll also find a set of small, bristle-like antennae. Their mouth parts are also quite unique. You'll see a long, pointed rostrum which they stab into plants, and a muscle-filled cyberial pump to suck up the sap in which they feed. They're mostly going to be shades of green, brown, or black to blend in with their surroundings, but the patterns in which they combine these colors can be magnificent. That's the adults, at least. Cicadas are hemimetabolous, meaning they have an incomplete three-stage metamorphosis, going from egg to nymph to adult. Cicadas lay their eggs in the twigs of their host plants, and after around a month or two, out come freshly hatched cicada nymphs. They cannonball down to the ground and begin burrowing towards the plant's roots. The cicada nymph will feed on the xylem of nearby roots for the next 2 to 17 years. Xylem is not very nutritious. It's mostly water. It's like living off of LaCroix. There are amino acids and minerals in there though, so it gets the job done. Eventually, after years of sucking on a root, the nymph is ready to complete its life cycle. If it's not eaten by a mole first. In some groups, up to 98% of nymphs are believed to die off in the first two years underground. But if they don't get eaten, the nymph will crawl out from the soil pick a spot on a nearby tree or whatever they can find, and begin shedding its exuvia to reveal a majestic winged adult. While it only takes an hour or two to pump up their wings and get moving, they're not going to be ready to sing for a few days. As we mentioned earlier, their calls are produced by timbals, and those membranes aren't fully hardened until a few days after their emergence. Some males won't sing for the first week or two. I say males because only males sing. It's how they shoot their shot with the local ladies. Of course, you don't want to get mixed up with the wrong species. So different cicadas will have different calls. And this can be a great way to parse out and identify what species are in the area. Let's listen to a few while I make direct eye contact.
Anyway, as many of you know, these calls can be quite loud. One species, Cyclochila australasiae, can reach volumes of around 110 decibels. That's as loud as a chainsaw. Not to mention, individuals of a species like to all sing at the same time of day, oftentimes in the same place. We call these grouping spots chorus centers. So now it's not just one chainsaw, it's a chorus of chainsaws. Once a male's call is received favorably by a female, the pair will mate for upwards of an hour. The male also creates a copulatory plug to ensure no rival males come along and steal his girl. The female will then go ahead and lay hundreds of eggs in those plant twigs to restart the cycle. Overall, the adults live for about a month. They sing, they mate, they die. Though they will feed on some xylem during this time as well. And other things feed on them during this time. Cicadas don't really have any fancy defense mechanisms. They can't sting, they don't really bite, they're not poisonous, and they don't really move that fast either. I mean, they are pretty good at blending in with their environments, and the males might give a little shout if they are faced with a predator, but that's about it. Because of this, rodents, birds, lizards, humans, and plenty of other predators will happily gobble them up. But some cicadas came up with another strategy. Predator satiation. You'll often see news articles about the massive broods of periodical cicadas that come up in eastern North America every 13 or 17 years. These cicadas sync up their emergences with one another, tracking the years through seasonal changes in xylem composition, resulting in emergences of a massive amount of cicadas in a small amount of time. Predators can eat their fill of cicadas, and the population of cicadas will still be strong enough to carry on the next generation. Every individual of these species don't all emerge in the same year. Rather, there are different populations or broods that are a little offset from one another. Think of it like a graduating class. The largest being brood X, numbering well into the billions. Also, just because cicadas are in the same brood doesn't mean they're all the same species. There are a couple species that sync up with one another within these broods. But with all these cicadas running amok, surely they pose some sort of danger, right? Well, nothing too crazy, but especially in large numbers, plants can get a little stressed out. Large amounts of nymphal feeding do seem to affect things like flowering and wood development, and oviposition damage from the adults can sometimes affect branch growth. But you really don't need to worry about them that much. Even with the big broods, healthy trees can tolerate them just fine. Besides, there are plenty of benefits to having cicadas around as well. As the nymphs burrow around in these root systems, they aerate the soil and foster healthy soil communities. As mentioned, the adults are also a great food source for a whole host of predators. Just big ol' protein packs. Cicadas have also been inspiring some unique developments in materials and medical research. Cicada wings were found to be bactericidal. Not only that, but they're self-cleaning, meaning they're killing the bacteria and then sloughing off the dead cells to prevent further bacterial growth. Scientists are using this unique structure to develop their own bactericidal self-cleaning material for medical equipment. Just another example about how learning more about our environment can inspire incredible innovation. Though we think of cicadas to be in massive numbers, they are still under threat in our changing world. Cicadas, especially the periodical cicadas, rely on their large numbers to satiate predators. If a population suffers a great loss, the remaining individuals just might not have the numbers to bounce back. And since their life cycle is so long and their nymphal stages so cryptic, it can be hard to assess the health of a population outside of their mass emergences. So if you have some of that native growth on your property, there's just one more reason to keep it around. And also support your local parks that work hard to restore and preserve pristine natural ecosystems. Though they're a little annoying at times, cicadas are natural wonders, both in their mass emergences and their cacophonies. Before we close out, I should mention there's another group of cicadas called the Tetagarctidae. They're a relict group of only two species, but they're still worth mentioning. Perhaps one day they'll get their own video. Anyways, thank you all so much for listening. If you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. 
And if you have any anecdotes about cicadas, any fun facts, or favorite species, please leave them in the comments below. I always love hearing about them. Peace, y'all.